And then David Spade's like, oh no, skinny guy. Okay. Okay. So guys, um, yeah, we don't have much notes to do. I know you guys are heartbroken about that. And, um, Finish notes, we have a scrimmage, and then you guys will have time to work on homework. It sounds like you guys kind of, we can, we can put a break in there. What? We can watch that scene. That, the B scene, and then also the deer scene. The deer is Um. Okay, so um, for our perimeters of our polygons, we talked about, um, we talked about similar shapes that we could be able to, their sides are proportional, but so are their perimeters. So that's the distance around. So just to remind you guys, perimeter is the distance around the shape. Oh, did everyone find these notes from yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. So the distance around the shape is the perimeter. So just as the sides are proportional, so are the perimeters. So, um, so we'll be the, we can use proportions also for perimeters of our shapes. So, um, you guys like let's say um, we'll give this side be a value of 27 27 okay and then what would this one be now that's way too small 18 18 so 18 okay so we have 27 to 18 the scale factor would be 27 over 18, and we'd simplify those. We can divide them both by 9, so a 3 over 2 scale factor. Let's say then I know the perimeter of this first one. Um, let's call it like 92. 92 or something. Let's say the perimeter is 92 of that. I can find the perimeter of the smaller shape by using this scale factor. What's that? Are you mad about the number he chose? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Get over it, Greg. <laughs> All right. So we can cross multiply. So 92 times 2, so 184. We divide by 3. And it'd be like 61 point something for our perimeter. So the perimeters are also proportional. You know the exact number. You need to know the exact number. Point, oh yeah, point three repeating. Thank you. Okay. Or 61 and other. Uh, so this only works for perimeters. This does not work for the areas. The areas are a little bit more complicated. We don't get into that this year. Um, it's kind of a nice to know thing, so we don't worry about that. We just talk about perimeters. So 
This next drawing, they tell me these two shapes are similar. So they have that little squiggle in the middle. So again, this is considered a similarity statement. So again, in our homework quiz, when I was asking you guys for that similarity statement, this is what they're talking about. So this is similar to that. They want the scale factor comparing these two. Um, we'll start there. Now, I like marking some things up so I make sure I know what goes together. So like A goes with F, so I just kind of double check that it looks like they match up the way I expect. Um, and B goes with G, so yeah, this is looking like it's aligned correctly. I mean, sometimes they have them flipped, so I wanted to make sure that they matched up. So it looks like everything is kind of in the right spot. So we want to find the scale factor comparing these two. Which two sides would you guys use for a scale factor? 10 and 15. So 10 would go with 15. Because those are the only two sides I know the sides that compare. So I can simplify that, divide them both by 5. So this is the 2 to 3 scale factor. So the little one is two-thirds of the big one. So again, scale factor, we like to simplify that. So if you haven't gotten the habit of simplifying that, please do. It's just a lot easier to talk about and use. They want us to find the value of x. Now, I'm told that these are similar. So I can use that fact to help me to solve for x. And again, the sides are proportional. So I can't just say x is 18, and I'm hoping you don't think they look like it's 18 because it's a smaller shape. So we're going to set up a proportion to figure this out. So someone tell me what they started their proportion with. x over what? 18. So x over 18. So these two go together. And then the other half of the proportion to solve that, what are you going to write? You can use 2 over 3. You can use 10 over 15 if you wanted. I think that's the end of our options. Um, so either one of those. So 2 over 3 is fine. Um, just to remind you guys, you can also you can use it unsimplified if you prefer. Um, but using it as a simplified fraction is a lot easier just for us to do in our head probably. Um, I don't really want to multiply or divide by 15. I'd rather divide by 3. So we find out that x is 12. How'd you do it? So what I did is I divided 18 by 3 and I times it by 2. As long as you know how to do that every time, it's fine. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, I just would be afraid you might not. All right, so they want us to find the perimeter of A, B, C, D, E. Now, I should be able to figure out the perimeter of this one. That's the distance around it. Did anyone figure out that perimeter yet?
using um, proportions. So 2 times 69, we get 138. I divide by 3. Oh, you guys were right. I just knew that was too small for the big shape, so that's why I was. All right. We get 46. answer. It just wasn't the question I was asking. All good. <laughs> okay, so um, the next thing we're going to talk about is actually kind of the chapter we skipped discusses all these different types of lines in triangles. Um, I've just noticed over time it's not something that you, gets used a ton in other classes. It doesn't get used ton, a ton on like an ECT. So I, um, the part of like the, what I, the part I'm going to show you is important, but the rest of it, all the little like um, things that happen with these different lines aren't as necessary. So the types of lines I'm going to talk about, just knowing what they are is, is just kind of good to know. It's not nothing like um, it'll make or break like a test score for you. So um, I want to show you guys these different types of lines. So the first one is called the median. And what a median does is it connects one side to the opposite midpoint. So it bisects the other side. So I'm going to call AB our median. So it's not really a side of a triangle, it's kind of a side of like length inside a triangle. So there's a whole chat or a whole section on medians and kind of all like the cool things that happen because of medians. Not really all that exciting, so um, we kind of get to skip that. Um, cool math people, cool, which is a little sketch. All right, the next one is altitude. This one you probably, we would use a little bit more. So what an altitude is, if I have a triangle, it goes straight down and it's perpendicular to the opposite side. There's two more. The next one is a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector. to it as well. So this one would go kind of up through the middle here. But it'd be perpendicular to that side as well. And the last one's called an angle bisect. mention them in the problem at all. So this one just bisects that angle and connects to the opposite side. So these are the four, like, basically, like, probably four sections we skipped out of chapter five. 
And the reason we skip them again, they go into all these little details about all the different things that happen with these different parts of the triangle. And again, it's kind of like math nerdy cool stuff, but at the same time, probably not the most important things to spend our time on if we have other stuff we need to learn. The biggest thing that we need to know though about these is that just like the outside of a shape or the perimeter, these are still proportional. So if they tell you they have an altitude or a median, it's still proportional. proportional. So these lengths are proportional. So just like we can use the outside of the shape, we can also use these lines on the inside, if they're one of these special lines. And I'm not going to be tricky about it. I'm not going to try to throw one at you that's like not one of these and kind of looks like one. It's not meant to be like that. I just didn't want the word to come up like median and you'd be like, I have no idea what she's talking about. Median is just a line that runs through their triangle. So again, not knowing much more about it, that's fine. So they tell us these triangles are similar. So we have similar triangles here. And then they draw a median in them. So they have this median drawn, and again, the median takes it and it bisects the opposite side. They want the length of the median, here, this, based off of what we know about the triangle. So just like other sides, the median is proportional. However, they don't give us the full side of any of these triangles. Do you guys see what we need to do here? So, 40, 40. Yeah, so in order to get a full side, both of these have to be 48. So the whole side would be 96. Then also have to be 40, so this whole side would be 80. The thing is, it would work if we didn't do that, like the 40 over 48 over 40 would still work because that's still the same ratio, but I want to make sure you understand we should compare the sides. So the, if we were talking about the scale factor, or just even how these two compare, it goes 96 with 80, because that's the side it's cutting in half. And then this x is in the 96 triangle, and then that 35 is in the smaller one. Now, if you're someone who hates working with those bigger numbers, you can feel free to simplify 98 over 80. And I believe you'll end up with, or 96 over 80, you'll end up with 6 over 5. Or you can just leave it this way, cross multiply. I mean, if you have a calculator anyway, it doesn't probably hurt to... And so we end up finding out x is 42. So you don't need to know a ton about these types of lines. You just have to know they're also proportional. And I, again, I just didn't want you to see any of those names and be like, oh, I have no idea what she's talking about. All right, last thing we'll do. Um, so it says the ratio of model car to the actual car is 2 to 35. So again, if you have like a miniature version of a car, 2 to 35, that's our scale. So if the model is 26 centimeters, so 26 centimeters, so like maybe you have like an RC car, like one of the little remote control ones, how long would that actual car be if it was in real life? So model car to um, actual is 2 to 35. So I make that a fraction. The model is 26 centimeters. The model is the little one. We want to know what the big one is, so the 26 is going to go on top up here. And we're going to find out the actual car length. Nine hundred and 
2010, I think, here. Divide by 2, and we end up with 40, um, 455 centimeters. Now, if you want to change that to meters, because like thinking about 455 centimeters, meters, you just move the decimal over twice, so that'd be like 4.5 meters. Um, so um, that would make that decimal, you know, like 4.5 meters, I guess, like thinking about four meter sticks laid out for a car. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a scrimmage with the stuff we've been talking about. Um, so hopefully, um, you guys are good on this. Um, and then our homework is the day two stuff. And again, apparently you guys pointed out it's not very long. Cadence, call it.